Hi, Python programmer here, and today I wanted to talk to you about the importance of reading research to really understand the field uh, and to give you insight and to help with your learning. So research papers and research articles, anything really that interests you, read the paper and try to understand it. Uh, and today I wanted to go through a research article with you, one that I think is really interesting. Um, and it's an article that was published in Nature uh, Medicine in August 2018. It's a collaboration between DeepMind, uh, UCL and the Moorfields Eye Hospital. Now, of course, you remember DeepMind. It's the company now owned by Google that became really famous for developing a system called AlphaGo that was able to beat the world champion player of Go. But what I want to look at today is research that they're working on that um, purely by image analysis uh, of, of the retina can help detect sight-threatening disease. And I think it's a really good example of where AI can be used in a, in a very specific field, uh, but yet have quite a big impact. You know, and I think that's something that we're gonna see across healthcare. I'm probably biased and I'm very excited about AI's application to many, many fields. But I think the application to the field of healthcare are, are fantastic. And, you know, it's going to revolutionize healthcare. It may be because I was a medical physics researcher for a while that I have this bias. I don't know. But, you know, it's, that's what excites me the most about AI is to begin with its application to medicine. By the way, on this channel, we cover AI, machine learning, data science, Python. Uh, I give advice on how to learn those subjects and why you should learn them and, you know, and the possible applications of those. Uh, so if that sounds interesting, then please do like the video and subscribe to the channel. They developed a deep learning system that can analyze 3D OCT images, more on those later, of the retina. And then based on that analysis, they were able to um, suggest four types of referral. Either an urgent referral, a semi-urgent referral, um, a standard referral or observation, which meant no referral at all. Optical coherence tomography, or OCT for short, is a way of getting really high resolution images, in this case of the retina, although it can be used in other parts of the body. And by really high resolution, I'm talking about five micrometers. Five micrometers, I mean, that's almost microscopic. If you if you uh, can compare that with, say, CT, you know, CT will give you um, resolution of about 0.5 millimeters. MRI, forget it, that's one to two millimeters. You know, so these are really high resolution images. I mean, incidentally, if you want to learn more about OCT, then there are links in the description below. So what's the problem we're trying to address here? Well, these OCT images are very good. They're the gold standard in, you know, in diagnostic imaging for conditions of the eye. They're quite quick to acquire. They take about 10 minutes. But in Moorfield's Eye Hospital alone, they have a thousand of these images a day that need to be analysed. And they just don't have enough experts to analyse these images. That creates a bottleneck, um, which creates a delay in the diagnostic process, and that can cause nasty outcomes for patients because some of these diseases that the patients will be suffering from require fast diagnosis and if they don't get that they can end up causing blindness. So here we have a situation where AI, if it can be done properly, could really help out. They wanted to make sure that they didn't just create a black box, a system that gave its decision without any insight as to how it arrived at that decision and that was very important for clinicians as well. So what they did was they broke the process down into two tasks. First of all, they created a segmentation network um, that had the original image as an input and then was able to create a tissue map from that image. That tissue map was then fed into the classification network in order for the system to make its decision on referral urgency. Um, it was also able to give its uh, opinion in terms of you know, probability as to what the likely disease was out of 53 diseases that it had been programmed to detect. Interestingly, the segmentation network used a 3D UNet architecture. Now that's a type of convolutional neural network. We've covered those on this channel before. And if you want to find out more about those, then click on this link. There's also a link in the description. But it's a special type of convolutional neural network that does particularly well when there's not much training data. 
Here's the original paper, uh, and you can download that as well. There's a link in the description. And also there's a link here to a website that gives a nice explanation about um, this type of network. Um, and that also includes a video from the uh, original researchers. So I hope that's of some use too. Now, of course, this system had to be trained. And what I think is really interesting was that the segmentation network was trained on 877 scans. But remember, these scans contain 128 images each because they're 3D. And it, manual segmentation was used, but it only required three out of those 128 images to be manually segmented, which saved a lot of time you know, and, and a lot of workload. And the other thing that's really interesting is that this system was trained on one device, but they wanted to make it device agnostic. So they also used data from a second scanner, but they didn't have to completely retrain in order to do that. They only needed a small number of training material from the second scanner in order to be able then to train the system. So here's a summary of the process. You have the original digital scan that goes into a segmentation network, which is trained on 877 manually segmented training images. That gives an output, which is the tissue segmentation map. Then that tissue segmentation map is input into the classification network. That network is trained on 14,884 training tissue maps and they use the confirmed diagnosis and referral decision. The system is then able to give its referral suggestion and a diagnosis probability. The performance was really, really good. In fact, the clinical ophthalmologist leading the research described it as jaw dropping. And the way they evaluated it was by taking 997 cases that had already been through the clinic. So the outcomes were known. And they looked at the scans of these 997 patients whose outcomes were already known, had already been determined, and they got the system to give its recommendation or its suggestion in terms of referral. And then they also got eight medical experts, four retinal specialists and four optometrists to give their opinions and recommendations on what the referral should be by looking at the scans that were taken, those scans that were taken on the first day. They also allowed the experts to give a second opinion based not only on those scans, but also on an additional scan, a fundus image that was taken, which is quite useful in terms of diagnostic um, diagnostics for, for eye conditions, plus notes from two visits that were two weeks apart. So the AI only had the original OCT scan. Um, in the first case, the experts only had the first OCT scan, but in the second case, they were asked to give another opinion based on that scan and some more information. And these are the results. So the error rate on the AI, which was 5.5%, outperformed all but the two best uh, medical experts in this test. But not only that, the AI system didn't miss a single urgent referral. If you look at this confusion matrix of the results, uh, you will see that that's very clear. So this is a really good example of where AI has been able to integrate into an existing system and augment the performance of that system. And I think, you know, when you look at healthcare and the strains on healthcare at the moment, this is just the sort of work that AI should be doing. And, you know, it holds a lot of promise for the future. I also want to talk to you about the lead researcher on this paper, Jeffrey Defoe. Um, you know, he's a computer scientist, a mathematician. And he said that uh, in, in an interview with Kaggle that, you know, that taking part in Kaggle competitions really helped him hone his skills in this area. And it, it would be really worth your while reading this interview with him on the Kaggle site. So I've put a link there to that. Do read this paper, you know, go to the DeepMind website, download the, uh, the article, have a look at it, try to understand it, look at the supplementary material as well. I think it'd be really helpful. If you want to learn Python or data science or machine learning, I have videos on that. I also have links in the description um, to places where you can do that. And uh, I hope this video has been of use to you. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.